Good evening, family, and welcome to our next session of Serve of the Bible. This is the second last session, and tonight we are talking about the people of the New Testament, going deeper into them and discovering their lives. And we want to thank you for being with us so far for these seven sessions. And like we said, our heart is that this is not only a course that you will know and gain knowledge, but that the love for the Word will resound in your heart. And that we will spend more time in the Word and spend more time with God and really learn to know Him in our lives. Please enjoy this session. Unlike the 39 Old Testament books that span over 3,000 years, the New Testament books, the 27 New Testament books, they span less than 100 years. Therefore, think about it. The number of people in the New Testament is far less than the Old Testament, and that's probably good. Four Gospels of Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John cover about 35 years and primarily record the life of Jesus Christ and His disciples. And the book of Acts and all the epistles that follow span about uh, 30 years and records the ministries of Christ's apostles and their personal ministry, including planting many churches. Well, after Acts ends, the story of the New Testament continues another 35 years until the apostle John writes that challenging book of Revelation, which takes us all the way through human history, to the new heavens and the new earth and to new Jerusalem that comes down from heaven and then right into eternity. Well, like the Old Testament, we have selected the 10 key New Testament people whose lives best represent the various periods of the New Testament that we'll learn in the final session together. You will learn those 10 important people and be able to not just know who they are from the pictures we've made, but to actually place them in the order in which they lived. So if you read about Stephen, you'd know who came before him and who comes after him. And not only that, but you also are going to memorize two key facts about each person. And wait till you, wait till you see how this goes. And when, when we're finished, you'll have another important key for yourself to understand the Bible. So. Just think about this. So you can think from one end of the Bible to the other. You've already learned the 10 key people in the Old Testament. Now you're going to learn the 10 key people of the New Testament, and you'll be able to think from one end to the other end, person to person. Well, as the last session, we're going to have some fun because we've invited even younger kids for this next session. Oh, uh oh, there they are. I can hear them. Listen to their excitement. They can't wait to star <laughs> in their first TV program. Laura, nice to meet you. What do you see? Uh, a telescope. That's right. Israel, where's Israel? Do you know on the map? And stand uh, behind that desk. How many there are? How many? 66. Whoa! Prizes we're going to give at the very end. Look at those pictures. How do you like those? Stop everything. It's time for a people pop quiz. Are you ready? Who comes first? Number one, Joseph and Mary with the shepherds or Paul's missionary journeys? The answer, Joseph and Mary. Question number two, John the Baptist baptizes Jesus or Philip witnesses to the Ethiopian? The answer is John the Baptist. And last, Peter preaches at Pentecost or Jesus is tempted by Satan? The answer is Jesus is tempted by Satan. How'd you do? Now let's join the kids. Right now, we're going to learn and identify the names of 10 key people in the New Testament. So what I want to do is I want to see if you can pick out anybody you think you know who it is, then raise your hand. Okay, who do you think you know? I think that's Mary. You think that's Mary? And who's next to Mary? Joseph. Joseph. And who's in the manger? Jesus. Wow. And who are those two people in the back? The wise man. And who's the other person? A shepherd. And a shepherd. That's very, very good. You got it. Okay, Davis, you're next. Um, What's that hand saying? Stop. Stop. Ah. And he was a famous preacher who preached where? In the cities or out in the country, in the wilderness? He 
preach the wilderness? Yeah, because look at his hairy clothes. And, it's, ooh. <laughs> and he's preaching, he says to the people, repent, stop sinning. And then he pointed to somebody huh? close. He, he was the first Baptist. John the Baptist. John the Baptist. <laughs> Okay, and raise your hand. Who do you think you know, Margaret? I think that one is Jesus. You think it's Jesus, and why do you think it's Jesus? Because you can see the blood on his hand from the cross. You can see the blood on his hand on the cross, and what's that on his other arm, do you know? Um, That's a harder one. What did he do in the upper room with his disciples? He got down on his knees. Oh, and washed his feet. He's washed his feet, so that's Jesus. Okay, Hannah, you know somebody? That's Judas. Come on. That may be the hardest one. You guessed it. Was it his goatee? Why did you guess it was? He um, was paid 30 silver coins Very good. to kiss Jesus on the cheek so that the guards would know that it was Jesus and they would take him away. Wow. How many pieces of silver? 30. 30 pieces of silver. And how did you know he was kissing Jesus? Well, I just saw that he was... <laughs> He's got his, let me see you do the, let me see the Judas kiss. Look at his lips, sticking way out. Let me see a Judas kiss. There's a Judas kiss. There's a Judas kiss. Oh, look at her. And what about you? Yo. <laughs> and we're going to have a vote. Who has the best Judas kiss? On the mark. Get set. Go. I don't know. Let's see who wins. We have a champion. Would you raise your hand as a champion? Very good. Let's give her a hand. Which one do you want? That one. Oh. Oh, my goodness. Who is this? It's Thomas. It's Thomas. What's his nickname? Doubting Thomas. Oh, let's give her a hand. Katie, way to go. So he's doubting, and what's he doubting? That Jesus is alive. That Jesus was alive because he died. He died. So he's a doubter. And then when Jesus shows up, what does Jesus say to Thomas? Since you're doubting, I want you, you don't believe I rose again, I want you to take your hand and put it in your eyes. In my side. And what happened to the doubter? He became a believer. All right, who hasn't guessed yet? This guy is somebody in the New Testament who preached a famous sermon on the day of Pentecost and one of Jesus' closest friends. Peter. Peter. Let's give her a hand. She guessed Peter. And what did Peter do for a living? He fished. He fished, and he also preached on this day when the Holy Spirit came called Pentecost. Very good. This one is really a hard one. Where do you think he's from? <laughs> That's right. In fact, he lived in a certain country in Africa called uh, Ethiopia. He's from Ethiopia. And he was... And what's he reading? A map. He looks like a map. It's a scroll. Mm -hmm. It's a copy of one of the books of the Old Testament that talk about Jesus. And he was wondering, would you explain this scroll? Because it's got writing on all the inside. And God sent a man, this man right here, who was an evangelist and preached about Jesus, to come help him. And his job was to, I'm going to give you his, give you a hint. He had to fill up something, fill up his understanding. So what's his name? Philip. Philip, who talked to the Ethiopian. Let's give her a hand. She had the hardest one. Okay, who hasn't guessed somebody that wants to guess? Okay, Katie, who do you want to guess? Um, this one, I think it's Saul. Why do you think it was Saul? Because he persecuted Christians. He persecuted Christians. And what's the rays coming down from the sun? A bright light. A bright light. What happened at the light? Do you know that story? Wow. What happened? He was happened? riding on a donkey, and then the Jesus came down, and he called out, and, he, and the light blinded him. The light blinded him. And wh what did he start? What's in his hand? A church. So he went around and started churches. And do you know what he did for a living? Can you look at his belt and figure out what he made? He used to make things that you live in in the old days. Houses? Now, even before houses. Tents! He was a tent maker. His name was Saul, and after he had that event, God changed his name. What was it? It's Paul. Very good. This one is the hardest one because it's made up of how many different people? Three. Four. Four, oh, oh, four, four people. Oh, four. Hmm. Does he look very happy? No. No? And what's his thumb doing? He's it's pointing down. And what's that mean? 
Disapproval. Disapproval. That's pretty big. That's a sixth grade word, man. That's pretty good. Disapproval. And what's this guy doing? It looks like he's writing mm -hmm. a letter or a... He's copying um, a scroll of the books of the Old Testament. And who's this guy? The tall guy with a very famous head and he's very mm -hmm. religious. He's a high... He's the high... He's the high... Priest. He's the high priest. <laughs> And there were other key religious leaders. These are all the religious leaders. This guy was sad because he didn't believe that when you died, you had a resurrection. He was sad. You see? Sad. Sad, you see? Who's that? Uh, it is. The sad, you see? That's the guy's name. These were the sad, you sees. And these are the guys who really gave Jesus and the Apostle Paul a lot of problems. And they were the f f Pharisees. 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 Who's this? The sad. You see. see. Say it again. The sad. You see. And who's this? The high priest. And who's this? The Pharisees. Pharisees. Everybody say Pharisee. 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 And who's this? The high priest. And who's this? The sad. You see. And when a guy copies things over, he's called a scribe or a teacher. Okay, you know somebody. This guy wrote a very famous book. It was the last book in the Bible. Can you, it starts with a hmm, R. Anybody know who the last, but the last book in the Bible is? Evie, do you know? Revelation. Revelation. And does anybody know who wrote Revelation? No. He was one of the three favorite friends of Jesus. It was Peter. Isaac. Isaac's a good guess. His name begins with a J. Jonathan. That's a good guess. Yeah. Peter, James, and? John. John! <laughs> Very good. You got it. What we want to do now is to actually learn two memory pegs. It's a peg inside of your mind, so when you think of um, Joseph and Mary, you think of the two memory pegs. Who, who are the two memory pegs? Shepherd and wise men. Okay, I want you to stand right here behind, uh, right next to the number. Good. Who's in charge of this one? Come on over here. Who is this? John the Baptist. And what are the two memory pegs? Repent. Repent. And what's this one saying? Behold Jesus. Behold the Lamb of God. It is Jesus, but that's what he said, the Lamb of God. So let me see you do a gesture like this for us with the hand out. The hand out like this? That's right. And then you're pointing. Okay, and what are you saying? Repent. <laughs> what is it? Repent. And? Behold the Lamb of God. That's great. Who's this? Jesus. And who's representing Jesus? Come on up. And Jesus came to serve yes. and? To die on the cross. Okay, and we're having two S's just so it's easier to remember. It's to serve other people and to sacrifice. Come on up here with me and circle right here, everybody. And let's work on this together. Here we go. Ready? Joseph and Mary, shepherds, wise men. John the Baptist, repent. Behold the Lamb of God. Jesus, serve and Hannah's here. Who is Hannah? Judas. And let me see your illustration with your hand out front. And this in back. What did Judas do with the kiss? Kissed Jesus on the Betray with a kiss? He betrayed. So this is Judas betrayed with a kiss. Say it. Judas, Judas betrayed. betrayed with a kiss. And he was paid how many pieces of silver back here? Thirty. Thirty pieces of silver. Okay, who's this? Thomas. Who's, you're Thomas. Nora's Thomas. And Thomas is a doubter. See, he's doubting. He's saying, no, I don't really think so. And you remember what happened? Let's see, it's this hand is the doubting hand, so we're like the picture. And this was, why is his finger out like this? Do you remember? Because he's pointing at God, not, I mean, Jesus, uh, not believing. And, and what did Jesus say to make him believe? Put your uh, hands in my side. That's right, where the spear went. So that's what this is doing. It's reaching forward to the side of Jesus. Ready, here we go. Thomas. Thomas. Down. Down. All the way at the beginning, get back to your pose. Don't get your pose until we get to you. Who can do it? Let's try it. Joseph, Joseph and Mary, shepherd and wise men. Pose. 
John the Baptist, repent, behold the Lamb of God, Jesus, serve and sacrifice, Judas, betrayed with a kiss, 30 pieces of silver, Thomas, daughter, believer. Who's this? Peter. And you're Peter, and you're holding what with this hand? A fish. <laughs> what kind of fish? Uh, we don't know what kind of fish. And what is he doing? He's preaching on the day of Pentecost. Pentecost was a big uh, holiday, and that's when the Holy Spirit came from heaven, and it said there's f flames of fire on the disciples' heads, and there was a great miracle that he then preached in 3,000 people. So it's Peter, fisherman, Pentecost. This represents Pentecost. Ready? Who's this? Philip. Philip. And who's he talking to? This is the Ethiopian. And he was an evangelist because of a day of Pentecost, and he went and Ooh. preached and led people to the Lord. So it's Philip, he's an evangelist, and he also spoke and led this man to the Lord called an Ethiopian. So it's Philip, evangelist, Ethiopian. What's your pose? I think you're holding these two parts of a scroll. So you're like this as if there's a scroll here and a scroll here. Okay. Got it? Here we go. Ready? Philip, Philip evangelist, evangelist, Ethiopian. Ethiopian. Try it again. Philip, Philip evangelist, Ethiopian. Oh, right, who's the next one? Uh, All right, Paul. And what's he doing? Can you get that stance? He's kind of down a little bit. Tent maker, church planter. That's right, tent maker, church planter. <laughs> That's right. That's it. Ready? Here we go. Paul, Paul tent maker, church planter. All right, here's the next one. What's that group called? Religious leaders. Religious leaders. Okay, here's what I want you to do. I want you to see if you do all four little drawings. So the first one, we say religious leader. Then you go like that for high priest. Look over there. What is he doing? He's got his thumb down. So that's the Pharisees. Look at his hands here. And he's sad. He's the sad you see because they didn't believe in the resurrection. And the last one is writing something at the bottom. That's the scribe. So you say religious leaders. Ready? Religious, religious leaders. leaders. High priests, Pharisees, Sadducees, scribes. And the other word I want you to understand is they were the people that opposed Opposition. Jesus. Opposition is the word. Very good. Back to the beginning. We're almost done. Ready, set, go. Joseph and Mary, shepherd, wise men, John the Baptist, repent, behold the Lamb of God, Jesus, serve and sacrifice, Judas, betrayed with a kiss, 30 pieces of silver, Thomas, daughter, believer, Peter, fisherman, Pentecost, Philip, evangelist, Ethiopian, Paul, ten maker, church planter, the religious leaders, high priests, Pharisees, Sadducees, scribes, officers. Very good. And who's John? John, prison, revelation. So it kind of rhymes. Ready? John, prison, revelation. One more time. John, prison, revelation. Okay, everybody stand in front of your, your person. This, this is going to be your finest hour. So what we're going to do is nobody else can say a word, and when it comes to your person, you're supposed to get in this stance, tell us the person's name, and the two memory picks. Everybody be quiet. Okay, on your mark. Go slow. Get set. Go. Joseph, Mary, shepherd and wise men. John the Baptist, repent, behold the Lamb of God. Jesus, serve and sacrifice. Judas, betrayed with a kiss, 30 pieces of silver. Thomas, doubter, believer. Peter, fisher, fisherman, Pentecost. Um, Philip, Evangelist, Ethiopian. That's very good. It's a tough one to remember. <laughs> Paul, tent maker, church planter. <laughs> Religious leaders, high priest, Pharisee, S Sadducee, scribe, opposition. Woo. John, 
prison revelation. That's perfect. Okay, get your two teams. We're going to race all this. Watch the hat. Watch the hat. This is going to be tough to win. On your mark. Get set. Go. go. This team can win. Watch the hat. On your mark. One, two, three, go. Joseph and Mary, wise man, shepherd, don't have ashes, but hate you, holy name of God. Jesus, third of their sacrifice. Judas, betrayed with the king, dirty with the silver. John, stout believer. Peter, fisherman, Pentecost. Philip, evangelist, Ethiopian. Wow, 32. Very close. You won. Yes. Let's give him a big hand. <laughs> Weren't those kids something? But in case you were wondering, how could I possibly remember the order of those 10 New Testament people without the stand-up pictures that those kids had? Then this session's for you. What we're going to do is we're going to connect the star and the menorah to the New Testament people. The star to the Gospels people and the menorah to the Acts and the Epistles people. And you'll have them before you know it. But I want you to remember that the apostles lived during the time of the Gospels and Acts and the Epistles. So our order is not when these 10 people were born or died, but when they primarily fit into the New Testament story. And what we've done is we've linked one key person to each part of the symbols. So let's begin. We'll teach this in three steps. First, we'll review the five parts of the symbol on the screen. Then we'll come back here and review the five New Testament people. And what we'll do is we'll bring these two together. We'll connect each person to the part of the symbol so you can memorize the order of the New Testament people. So come on over here to the screen with me for the people of the Gospels. And what we want to do is to build this real quickly with you because you already have learned it. Number one, the early life of Jesus with a forward arrow pointing to the coming of Christ. Then secondly, the ministry of John the Baptist who pointed backwards to Jesus. Behold the Lamb of God. And in the middle, the ministry of Jesus. And then as his ministry comes to conclusion, number four, the trials and the crucifixion. And finally, the resurrection and ascension. Those are the five parts now let's review the five gospel people. But what we have inside my bag is we've upgraded that Mind Easy Modulator 9000 to the 12,000. And what this can do is absolutely remarkable. And you'll see this at the conclusion. And what we're going to do is bring those five people out and review them and come back. First of all, let's bring up Joseph and Mary. You remember the shepherds and the wise men. And then John the Baptist, who preached repent and there's the Lamb of God, which takes away the sins of the world. And then Jesus, serve and sacrifice. And then Judas, nobody's favorite, who betrayed Jesus with a kiss. Remember that little girl and the 30 pieces of silver? Let's move him off and let's bring up Thomas, the doubter and the believer. Therefore, do you have them together in your own mind? It's Joseph and Mary, John the Baptist, Jesus, and then Judas, and then Thomas. Now let's take these five and carry them over to the Star of David and put them in order for you on our chart. On the early life of Jesus, there's Joseph and Mary. In the ministry of John the Baptist, it's obviously John the Baptist. And the ministry of Jesus is Jesus, but the trials and crucifixion is Judas. And the resurrection and the ascension is Thomas. Well, there you go. Let's now move to the second half in which we're going to deal with the menorah, the menorah, and put those 
five parts, come back to the people, and then link them together again. The uh, people of Acts and the Epistles with the menorah starts out with the birth of the church to the Jews, the spread of the church to the Samaritans, the three missionary journeys to the Gentiles, and Paul's trials and imprisonment, and then the part that brings us all the way to the present, the global expansion to eternity. Now let's move back over here and let's use our modulator to bring up the five people from Acts and the Epistles. First of all, that big fisherman, Peter, who was a fisherman, and he's the one who preached at Pentecost, and move him off, and let's bring up Philip, who was the evangelist and led the Ethiopian to the Lord. And then we have the Apostle Paul, who was a tent maker and the amazing church planter. And then, <laughs> nobody's favorite here, the religious leaders. You remember them? The high priests, the Pharisees, the Sadducees, the scribes. They, they were down on everything to do with Jesus and his followers. The religious leaders opposed and rejected Jesus in the Gospels, and also they persecuted Paul on his missionary journeys and even tried to murder him while he's under arrest in Jerusalem and Caesarea. And then lastly, we have the Apostle John, who was a prisoner on the island of Patmos, and he's the one who wrote the book of Revelation. Now let's bring these two together. So let's go back to our screen. And what we have is our menorah, and the birth of the church to the Jews was obviously the preaching of Peter at the day of Pentecost. The spread of the church to the Samaritans was the evangelistic efforts of Philip. And the missionary journeys to the Gentiles, that's obviously Paul. And Paul's trials and imprisonment, remember that group that really tried to murder him? That's the religious leaders and the global expansion to eternity by the Apostle John. Well, there you go. Just bringing those unknown to the known together can help you remember them forever. Well, now it's time to move to the conclusion of the people of the New Testament. When Jesus left heaven on a divine mission to earth, he turned the world upside down. In fact, the world has never recovered from who he was, from what he taught, and from what he did. And when Jesus left earth and ascended back to heaven, his followers have continued in his footsteps and have been changing the world ever since. In fact, when Paul and Silas on one of those missionary journeys came to one city, the people literally cried out and said, these have turned the world upside down. It was happening back then. But Christ and his followers today just don't change the world a little. They literally continue to turn the world upside down. In fact, the number of Christ's followers at the time of his resurrection has grown by millions of times to today. In fact, the number of Christ's world changers have grown explosively in just the last 100 years, from about 600 million in 1910 to more than 2 billion today. In fact, I just returned from a global briefing of Christian leaders, and we're in the process right now of planting more than five million new churches across the entire globe, in every nation, in every language, in every people group. The total number of Christ churches will more than double, not just in a thousand years, not in a hundred years, but in just the next five years. But now it's your turn, my friend. It's time to rise up and turn your part of the world upside down before Jesus comes back down. As we conclude, I'd like to etch these two precious symbols into your mind and into your heart forever. The stunning uh, Star of David and the magnificent menorah in all of their radiant glory. 